You know what I always say? Excuses sounds best to the person that is telling them. Um, I, I don't think I can let this go or I can safely have a weekend off without putting in a live show. Thanks, Stephen Sid, and I think I've tried something. Let's see what we can come up with on this one here. Okay, Russ Crawley, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for the patience, guys. I'm trying something new here. And um, yeah, it, it just gave me a lot of headache. So best to just keep it as we, um, you know, we're used to. Thank you so much, uh, Robert, for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, today we're talking about reasons why uh, some of the social media strategies are not actually yielding the results that people want. Yes, Robert, hopefully, fingers crossed on this one now. Scott Woodrow, thank you so much for tuning in. Third time lucky. Let's see how um, this is going to go through. If you're just tuning in and this is your first time watching the Lunch and Learn, my name is Prosper Tarovinga. Austin, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the third time we're trying this to work. So hopefully this is going to maintain. All right. So we were, we were literally talking about how, um, how some of the social media strategies that we're using are no longer working. All right. The reason being Facebook keeps changing their algorithm. All right. Um, why they're doing this is because now Facebook is now a publicly traded company, which means they are forced to be generating uh, profits for their shareholders. So they're not going to care if Anita or Austin or Steven or Robert is not reaching their clients. You know why? Because they need money to give back to their shareholders. So all of these changes are actually affecting um, most of my clients. And I'm, I'm thinking they also affect you as a business owner. You know why? Because you're never going to know how if your, um, you know, your, your audience is actually receiving your message or not, if you're not paying on Facebook. All right. So at the end of the day, there's a few tactics that I'm, I have up my sleeve that I wanted to impart with you before we ended this week so that you too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much, everybody else that's been so patient and uh, tuning in with me. Um, and I really hope that um, we're going to sustain this one all the way through. Now, can you just type in where you're checking in from so that I know who is listening and so that I know that, you know, this message is also being received regardless of it being a free platform. You never know when they're going to start charging for this. All right. So a few of us can still weather the storm by making social media part of a marketing strategy, not making social media in and of itself the strategy that you're going to rely on. Nicole, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. There's a few reasons why I really want that you stop relying on Facebook alone as your strategy for, um, you know, your, your social media. Judith, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. First of all, like I've been saying, the organic reach is going to continuously be on a decline. Every single year, if you have a page right now, you will be noticing that there's a 2% decline on the reach that you're having with your audience. All right. A lot of people are realizing that, um, you know, the more you're trying to reach your audience, the lesser you can uh, up until you are paying for it. All right. Organic reach may never reach up to zero. You, you may still be able to reach a few people, but it's continuously going down, down, down. All right. And there are also um, a few ways that you can actually start using to engage, I mean, to, to, to increase the engagement. All right. And um, one of the things is maybe to start connecting with your audience through your own private profile. Now, can you type in yes or no? Do you connect with people using your private profile? Or are you still using your page as your overall strategy? Are you using your private profile as a way to actually reach out to um, uh, customers? Or do you use just your, your, your Facebook page? All right. For, for small business owners, like if most of the people that I, I talk to here every single day, you should actually be making it your point to build an audience around your work, to nurture that audience 
and to actually, um, you know, when you nurture that audience to actually now be able to sell to them because they already know you, they trust you and they like you. All right. The biggest problem is if you start paying for Facebook ads or social media ads, it doesn't always translate to income. How many people are failing with their Facebook ads every single day? You know what I mean? Because they haven't clearly defined what their message is. They haven't clearly specified what their market is. All right. So it's, it's really essential these days to know who you want to sell to, to know what their problem is and to actually know how to engage with them. Because if you cannot engage with people one on one, they are literally not going to purchase from you if they see your ad through the newsfeed. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying that you should abandon social media or, you know, all, all, all in all, but you have to be smart about where you're spending your money and where you're spending your time. All right. It might seem like I'm on social media 24 seven, but most of this is either automated or there's people behind the scenes that are helping. So you need to figure out what your marketing strategy is. All right. Is any of you guys using LinkedIn as a marketing strategy as well? Are you using LinkedIn for your marketing? If you are, type in yes. If you're not, um, just type in no there. All right? Because the platform that you utilize or whatever platform you go to, it doesn't matter. As long as your message is actually reaching a market. All right. The reason why I'm saying that is because these platforms, these Facebooks, these, um, you know, Google Plus, all of these other platforms, LinkedIn, whatever it is, these platforms are not ours. These are not our platforms. All right. So even if you build a big following around, you know, you, you, you have to realize that these customer, these, these are not your customers until you have taken them to your own private pro profiles. All right. Robert says my private profile, although I have a blog page. Exactly. I'm going to go and uh, actually articulate why you need to be bringing people to your own, um, you know, platforms like your blog, which is what you're doing there, uh, Robert, because the traffic that you have on Facebook is rented traffic. They may be following you, but the social platform has complete control over what they can see or what they can do. All right. And Scott says, I hide all advertising that does not apply to me. Exactly. You're not alone. Everybody now is experiencing what is called ad fatigue. All right. People are tired of seeing people that are just selling, selling, selling. You have to actually be creating and relating for the audience that you want to reach out for. All right. So most of us are seeing the way maybe I show up every single day. You know why? Because I want to get to know you guys. I want to know. I want to get to know how I can provide value. All right. Even if there's glitches or whatever on the Internet, I still want to show up so that I can be there for you. All right. So, you know, a lot of people are just building a business on somebody else's platform, which is either Snapchat or Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn. You know, because um, I did say this earlier on. All right. If you are not paying for the service, you are the product. So all of these people that are on Facebook, they are Facebook's product, whether they like it or not. And that's how Facebook is monetizing. That's how they're selling their um, information to, to well to do advertising uh, people so that they can sell to them. All right. So if you're building your business on somebody else's platform, this will lead to the downfall of a lot of entrepreneurs. All right. You want to make sure that you are taking that traffic off of Facebook and putting them onto something that belongs to you, which can be a, a, a list. All right. Which can be whichever way you are giving value to those people so that they get to know you so that they get to trust you and then they get to become your customers. All right. You need to be putting in call to actions on your Facebook using lead magnets so that you get these leads and they become your email subscribers. All right. Every single time that you're on Facebook, you need to be making sure that you're making your copy or you're making your message relevant to a particular audience. You can't be everything to everyone. 
All right? So you want to improve your message. You want to improve your copy to make sure that you're speaking to them. You're speaking to your customers and telling them you have something that they actually need. But most of us are just spraying and praying. And that's the reason why social media is not yielding the best return on investment. All right. And when you're on social media, you want to make sure that you're actually writing or putting out content that people actually want. So how are you going to know that the content you're putting out, um, you know, people want if you're not relating to them, if you're not interacting with them? All right. So this is these are all the things that we have to be looking out for because Facebook Facebook is rented area. Facebook is rented ground. It's a rented platform. All right. We do not own the people up until we've taken them across to us and they become our own email subscribers and they become our leads or we've had a conversation with them um, in, in, in the form of a, um, a, a consultation. All right. And make sure that whatever you're doing, you're always having a call to action. That is not exactly asking people to do much, but it's a way of bringing people into your own ecosystem. Are you creating products that people can purchase off of Facebook or are you just selling other people's products or are you just, you know, you know, uh, not relating to the people and actually giving them a service or a product that they actually want? That's the reason why a lot of people get frustrated on Facebook. All right. So social media should not be a marketing strategy. It should just be a part of a marketing strategy where you use it as a lead generator with the ultimate goal of getting those leads to visit either your website or to go in to your email list. All right. The people that are watching right now, do you currently have an email list that people get information from you, either newsletters or telling them about your latest offers? Can you type in if you've got an email list that you're actually using and exposing to, um, you know, help, you know, sell your products? Because as far as I know, email marketing is still the most effective way to close a sale. When people are on Facebook, there's a lot that's happening. There's a lot of distractions and there's a lot of negativity on Facebook. What would make you think that your message will cut through that? Yeah. After all, 100% of the people that are on Facebook, they're not there to come and buy anything. They're there to connect with their loved ones. So if you're not a, a friend of theirs, then you're not part of what their loved ones are. So they won't pay attention to you. All right. And the biggest problem that we're also facing is we're not connecting to our actual customers. We're only connecting to people that are our peers, people that are on the same level as us. You know what that does? It means you are not going to be um, able to sell to those people. It means you're not going to be able to convert those people. You know why? Because you all are in the same, um, you know, field. You can't sell, um, you know, you know, to somebody else who's doing the same thing as you are. All right. But if you take people off of the social media, if you take people off of Facebook, all right, 100% of people that you then put into your email list will definitely receive your emails without you paying to reach them. All right. And Sivas, thank you so much for tuning in. And Steven says, I've got hundreds of um, customers, but haven't organized them into a list to regularly connect with them. Well, obviously, if you've got a list of people that have probably purchased from you already, pe you know, once people have purchased from you, Steven, they are more than willing to purchase yet again. All right. So you want to make sure that wh whoever you're reaching out to, if you've got their email address, Keep them in touch with you. You know why? Because out of sight, out of mind. If you're going to be relying on people seeing your um, Facebook, um, you know, your Facebook post, organic reach is going down by 2% each and every single day because Facebook is now trading publicly. They need to pay their board members. And Anne Siva says, ask for referrals. That is also something that a lot of people should be doing, but not a lot of us are doing that. All right. All right. So when you then get to a point where you want to close those leads on social media, you have to have taken them off Facebook onto something else that you particularly own. 
You know, now they have a chance to see everything else that you offer. And it gives them a chance to make, you know, multiple sales. But if you're just talking to them from the Facebook platform, do you know who else they're talking to? Do you know who else they are messaging behind the scenes? All right. So your mission is to create lifelong customers by actually taking them off of Facebook and putting them onto your own mailing lists so that you are in touch with them regularly. Because your website has to be the foundation, not your social media. I will give you a specific example. Two years ago, people moved all their business to Snapchat. A lot of entrepreneurs did that. But guess what happened? Facebook went on and ripped everything else to do with Snapchat. All right. That was the biggest internet, social media, internet highest that we've seen right in front of our eyes. That has left Snapchat not, um, you know, a, a big platform for people to play on. But although Snapchat is making a comeback, you know, by partnering with Apple and Google, I don't know what else they're going to come up with. That in and of itself would tell you that concentrating your business on social media is like playing on quicksand. You never know what is going to do. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. All right. So at the end of the day, what you really got to realize, what you really got to take note of is who is your customer and are you actually reaching to them? And when you have reached to them, bring them across. All right. Stop just relying on Facebook or stop just relying on, um, you know, social media to be your, um, your way you base your business off of. All right. And Steven says, let's do a dual live out of this. Of course. If you've got my calendar, can you book it in so that we can do it depending on the time difference? Um, Robert says, no, only a closed Facebook group. Okay, I don't know about groups and I'm not a really big fan of them because some people just come and sit in groups and they don't contribute and some people just go in there and they feel like, you know, you are supposed to be giving them value. So I'm not, I'm not, I can't really comment about groups, but there's something that is already happening within the Facebook ecosystem because they have combined pages and groups. So I don't know what the future holds for groups there, uh, Robert. Okay. Facebook has combined, um, you know, pages and groups in as much as, um, you, when you have a page, they want you to have a community and that community is sort of happens to become a group. And they have killed the group app. So I don't know what the continuity is going to be about groups. All right. So I can't put my eggs in one basket. Be as diverse as possible and make sure that your strategy is not just based on social media. Because a diverse strategy ensues that you have success. Your customers are waiting for you to give them value. So you have to find them by building that audience. All right. By relating to that audience and eventually you want to be selling to that audience. And most of that can be done off of social media through your blogs, through your website. So those are the things that you really got to look at. All right. Because if you're just basing your business off of Facebook, what if they change the algorithm? They constantly changing. All right. So a very diverse marketing strategy is the best marketing strategy. All right. I don't know if you guys know anything about SEO or you know anything about, um, you know, social, um, I mean, uh, search engine marketing. All of those things are happening as well. You need to be putting them as part of your tools and, and, and strategy within your marketing because a diverse marketing strategy is the best marketing strategy. Just in case something decides to be changed or an algorithm is changed, you already have somewhere where you're basing on. All right. So putting all your eggs in one basket is a recipe of disaster. Social media marketing should just be part of your own unique and diverse marketing strategy. All right. Most of us, our businesses depend so heavily on Facebook that if you stop posting or if you stop um, <clears throat> publishing any posts, a lot of us, our businesses will stop. And I don't want that of people that, um, you know, I, I, I'm working with. Steven Siddon says, I like LinkedIn too. 
they suggest good contacts and can clearly see the industries people are in. LinkedIn is also good. Their merger with Microsoft now proves that Microsoft really just wanted data from LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is a good data mining site. All right. And I also I, I work on LinkedIn a lot, but not clearly as much because I don't find a lot of engagement on LinkedIn. And here's another tip that I can give you about LinkedIn. If you're not searching for work, you need to change your LinkedIn profile from being a resume to being a sales letter. All right. I'm going to repeat that again. If you're not searching for work. All right. And if you're using LinkedIn as a strategy to get leads, you need to change your LinkedIn uh, profile from being a resume because you're not searching for work to becoming a sales letter. So you have to be selling right from the get go. All right. So if you want to see an example of that, go and grab a look at my profile and see how I have made it. All right. I can't really remember all the points, but I've changed it into a sales letter because I'm not searching for work. All right. So, you know, like what um, Milan Kundera said um, before, business only has two functions, guys. You either have to be marketing all the time or you have to be innovating. If your marketing strategy is only on social media, I think this weekend is the time for you to actually really look at where are your leads coming from and where are the ones that actually convert the most, um, you know, uh, uh, from. And then make sure you have them in either an email list so that you can continuously market to them in private where they are not disturbed. All right. I know email is also a bit clouded, but if you've got a really good email marketing strategy, it will help you take people off of Facebook because this is a borrowed platform. And as you have noticed, this is the third time I've tried uh, putting out this live. So you know what I mean? They can choose what they what what they want your customers to see or not see all right these social media changes are constantly coming you know why because yeah they own the platforms and they will keep affecting your business one way or the other so you have the power to actually decide how your business can be affected all right you know so take some time this weekend to actually examine what your strategy for 2018 is going to be and make your marketing efforts as diverse as possible and focus on innovation don't just put all your eggs in the one basket all right mark murray how's it going my man there's there's over 2.5 billion people that are checking into facebook online every single day and there's multiple ways of reaching out to them Social media shouldn't be the only tool that you have in your tools box because some people right now if you stop showing up on Facebook That's the end of your business. So you need to make sure you've got a website You've got a way of generating those leads so that they become your customers You've got lead magnets that you literally Hand over to the people on social media for free and then exchange that for their email address All right so you want to make sure that all those things um, are, are working in unison and they are actually making you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I really hope this came out well. Um, this is take number three and you can see we really, really tried. Um, at the end of the day, go on and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And if I can help you with anything, um, um, as, as most of you guys know that I'm here to actually help you create an online footprint so you can optimize your business for growth and for profit. All right. Uh, Robert says, uh, it was getting to be quite the task manually invite everyone to the hangouts. <laughs> I like your hangouts by the way. All right. So I really want to help everybody else build systems so that your business can actually operate on autopilot and also so that you have different sources for you to get leads and I will help you generate that much revenue so that you basically work around the clock and you're branding your business instead of working on your business. All right. I mean, instead of working in your business. All right. So this is take number three. I really hope it came out well. If you've got any questions, let's continue uh, them in the, in the chat below and let's see how we can actually help each other earn more money with less struggle. In the meantime, go on and enjoy the rest of your weekend. I really wish you all the best. Thank you so much for tuning in and your patience.